We just got the brand new Necromancer Tower, which is available in the shop for 1,800 gems. In this video, I'll be showcasing every single level, how to use it, and giving my personal ranking on how good it is. Before I continue, do me a favor, hit that like button and subscribe to join the Blue Hair Mafia. It helps me out a lot and I really appreciate it. Also, if you want to talk to me, suggest videos, or maybe even be in one, consider joining the Blue Head Mafia Discord. It's a great time and I hope to see you there. At level 0, it costs 2,250 cash, deals 8 damage, has a fire rate of 1.5, 16 range, 5.33 DPS, and hidden detection. On top of that, once the Necromancer has dealt 30 damage, it places down 2 graves with a max of 6 at a time. Then, if you use its ability, the graves break and turn into skeletons. These skeletons have 20 health and ram into the enemy. At level 1, it costs a total of 3,000 cash, deals 10 damage, 6.67 DPS, and can now hit 3 enemies per shot. At level 2, it costs a total of 5,000 cash, has a fire rate of 1, 10 DPS, and it now summons 3 graves at a time. These graves can now spawn sword skeletons, which stop and attack the enemy. They have 20 health, deal 15 damage, a fire rate of 0 0.8, 6 range, and 18.75 DPS. At level 3, it costs a total of 15,000 cash, deals 25 damage, has 18 range, 25 DPS, and it now summons level 2 gravestones. These graves can turn into giant skeletons or skeleton knights. The skeleton knight has 65 health, deals 25 damage, a fire rate of 0.65, 6 range and 38.46 DPS. The giant skeleton has 250 health. And finally, at level 4, it costs a total of 45,000 cash, deals 15 damage, has a fire rate of 0 0.3, 50 DPS, and it can now attack 4 enemies at a time. It also summons level 3 gravestones, which can summon hollow guards and an executioner skeleton. The gravestones now also explode to deal 75 splash damage. The hollow guards have 750 health. The executioner skeleton has 3,000 health, 24 range, and every 4 seconds it throws a boomerang axe that deals 50 damage damage per hit. If we assume it's hitting at least 3 enemies per hit, that is a DPS of 37.5. That's pretty much it for the Necromancer's stats. The first thing I'm going to look at is how good the Necromancer itself is without the use of its ability. Considering that at max level it can hit 4 enemies at a time, it is a whopping 200 DPS. That's one of the highest DPS's in the game, making it a solid option against large crowds of enemies. It costs a total of 45,000 cash, giving it a DPS cost ratio of 4.44 DPS per 1k spent. That's pretty solid, and makes it a relatively good value late game option. You're only able to play 3 of them, giving them a max DPS of 600. That's not fantastic, but if you have other towers to fill up the placement limit, it's fine. Because it costs 2,250 cash to place, it's too expensive to be used in the early game. Also, the value of the level 0 Necromancer is abysmal, being only 2.37 DPS per 1k spent. Unfortunately, pretty much every level before level 4 isn't great. You should only place a Necromancer if you know you can fully max it out. That means you only really use this tower in the late game, and possibly in the mid game. But what about the skeletons? Well, this is where things get complicated. First of all, if you use the ability, any currently alive skeletons will die, so it's a good idea to let the Necromancer place the max amount instead of spamming the ability. From what I've seen, the type of skeleton spawned is dependent on random chance. You might get 6 Hollow Knights or 5 Hollow Knights and 1 Executioner. Considering an Executioner has 3000 health and has a very powerful attack, this can make a big difference. For my calculations, I'm going to assume you get at least 1 Executioner just to simplify things. If they all just immediately knock into enemies, the skeletons will deal around 6750 damage. Also, if we assume the Graves hit around 2 enemies when exploding, they'll add an additional 900 damage, totaling at 7650 damage. If you need help taking out an immediate threat, like the tank, this can be incredibly useful. It's kind of like a safeguard just in case things get dangerous. However, upon using the ability, the DPS of the Necromancer will drop dramatically. This is because when breaking graves or placing them, the Necromancer completely stops attacking. Because of how high its DPS is, after using an ability, the Necromancer quickly places down more graves, killing its DPS. That means you have to consider what the next wave of enemies will be, as you might end up causing yourself to lose by spamming its ability. I recommend using only one ability at a time, so that your other Necromancers can defend while it recovers. Overall, my initial impression of this tower is pretty positive. The design is awesome, and the skeletons are a super cool concept. Though, it does feel a bit clunky to use, and strategies involving it are going to be super complicated. Also, because the ability is so punishing, and it's only really good at level 4, I'm going to rank it as a B tier. However, take that with a grain of salt, as this tower is super unique, and there may be some good uses for it that I haven't taken into account. But, let me know what you think. How would you rank this tower? Personally, even if it's not great, it might be my new favorite event tower just because of how cool it is. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to Journal Bluehead Mafia. See ya.